Earthquakes and Angels and Dead Men. Hey, this is Eric Johansson, and this is a video to support my Bible reading challenge. And we're going to do a quick Bible study around Matthew 28 through Mark chapter 3. And frankly, I'm not going to get into Mark on this video. So we're going to be focused on Matthew 27 and 28. So here's the question that sets up this entire video. How do you confuse an entire group of people, a culture, or a religious organization? I say the answer is you pay a few people to tell the larger group of people something they are already inclined to believe. It's that simple. You play to people's Achilles heel or their weakness, and, and you tell them something they're already thinking is could be true or might be true, and you, and you, you pay somebody to tell them that with authority, and then they believe it. So let's look at how this plays out. With, with Jesus' resurrection and the Jews, this played out perfectly, and it's still an issue to this day. You know, so many people think, oh, the Bible, it's this archaic book, doesn't really have relevance for today. Hey, here's a perfect example of how relevant the Bible is today. Yesterday's video was the same thing. The woman with the alabaster box. People are still talking about that woman to this day, and Jesus said that would be the case. So pretty fascinating. Matthew 27, verse 62. I'm going to summarize the, the setup in Matthew 27. Maybe you've heard this story. But what happens in Matthew 27 is that the chief priests and the Pharisees basically come to Pilate. Pilate is the Roman, he's like a Roman leader. Okay. And, and they're reminding him, they're saying, hey, this, this deceiver, they're talking about Jesus Christ now said that while he was yet alive, after three days, he will rise again. And so to prevent this, what, they, what they're what they requesting from Pilate is that he he gives them a watch. Okay, A watch, not, not the kind of watch you wear on your wrist. It's a military term, meaning a squad of four men. Okay, And, he, and, and so they ask that they watch the tomb of Jesus Christ so that his disciples can't come in there in the, in the middle of the night and steal the body and then and then tell everybody, hey, Jesus rose from the dead. And, and then making, you know, making the situation worse for the religious leadership and for the Romans. And so again, you know, I talk, I've, I've talked in a previous video about this ecumenical movement. And so here we have the Jewish religious leadership, we have the Roman leadership, and then we have, you know, people in general that are, that are all kind of working together to, to deceive the world, deceive the masses. All right, so anyway, in Matthew 27, Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch. So he gives them the watch. These are four Roman soldiers. And he says, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre, sepulchre sure. Sepulchre is a Bible word for, it's like a... It's like a burial. It's a hole in the ground. Basically, it's like a small cave specifically designed to bury a body. And he said, seal the stone and set a watch. Okay, so here's these four Roman, most likely like centurions, that are designated to watch this sepulcher. So now watch what happens. I'm going to drill down a little bit. In Matthew 28, 2, it says, and behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it, sat upon it. Okay, so imagine this. These four Roman centurions are guarding the tomb of Jesus. And then an earthquake happens and an angel of the Lord comes down, rolls that sealed stone back and then sits on the stone. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. This is, this is wild stuff. Matthew 24, and for, the, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. So thus my title, earthquake and angels and dead men. Matthew 28, 11. So now we're jumping ahead. So now, so now the body's gone and these, these four Roman soldiers are at risk of losing their life for failing their duty. Okay, so that's how serious it is for these Roman soldiers. So some of them, some of the watch came into the city. So it says some. Um, Perhaps one was holding back. Maybe one was just too afraid to, to go, you know, explain that they lost their prisoner, so to speak. 
But at any rate, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. Okay, so they're telling them, hey, you know, something, you know, earthquake, something came down from heaven, rolled the stone, you know, all that. They're telling the story. And when they were assembled with the elders, okay, so now we're talking to the religious leadership and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. Uh-oh, somebody's getting bought off to lie. Does that happen today? <laughs> yeah, I think it happens all the time today. Matthew 28, 13, saying, say ye. Okay, so the people that gave the soldiers large money are now coaching them what to tell the people. And so they're saying, tell the people. His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Okay, well, first of all, this is a ridiculous story because Roman centurions would never sleep on the job because sleeping on the, on the job would mean that they would most likely lose their life for dereliction of duty. Matthew 28, 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So in other words, the religious leadership is saying, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll stand in on your behalf and we'll protect you. We'll, 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 we'll make sure the governor doesn't take your life for failing. Matthew 28, 15. So they took the money and did as they were taught. Now here's, here's where the Bible suddenly becomes super relevant in the world today, 2023. And this saying, okay, so they took the money and did as they were taught. What they were taught was to tell everybody that his disciples came and stole the body of Jesus so that they could lie to people and say that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Well, the reality is Jesus did resurrect from the dead, but the religious leadership wanted to try to disguise that fact. Okay, so here's, again, sorry, a little bit of a rabbit trail, but this is what this is what the Bible says. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Okay, so here's the challenge. If you don't think the Bible is relevant, go Google search. This is an easy Google search, okay? I was already aware of it, but I, I did it myself because I was... Gonna, I knew I was going to challenge my readers to do this for themselves. And I just kind of wanted to see what you're going to see. So go, go Google search Jews that don't believe Jesus was resurrected or was Jesus resurrected according to Jews, something like that. And you will find all kinds of articles. There is so much debate that has happened probably from this moment of when it actually happened a couple thousand years ago to this very day. Jews are arguing and, and quite heatedly so about whether or not Jesus Christ was actually resurrected or not. It's more common for Jews to think that he did not resurrect from the dead. Okay, so there you go. The Bible's super relevant. And I hope that you got something from this. Please subscribe. You know, if, if you have any questions or you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, I'd love to do that. Um, but yeah, please subscribe, please follow, and thanks for being here. And if you're reading along with me in my Bible reading challenge, by the way, the, the link to that is in the description. Come join my group. I, I challenge you to read your Bible. We're going to start all over again in January. So maybe it's time to start gearing up mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for that. But uh, have a good Bible read.